Hi, my name is Kimberly Gonzalez. I'm the Outreach Director at BioBioPlastic Bags, New Jersey. It is an honor to welcome you all here to today's webinar organized by our policy team. We'd like to thank all of the legislators and aides who are able to make it to tonight's event. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Kaya now, who will talk a little bit about Bye Bye Plastic Bags in Jersey. Hello, my name is Kaya Desai. Bye Bye Plastic Flags is a global movement of youth raising awareness about the impacts of plastic and working towards working to ban single-use plastics with the focus on plastic bags across the world. The New Jersey chapter has organized and mobilized New Jersey youth to advocate for a statewide ban on single-use plastics, which was signed into state law last November. We have run webinars alongside organizations like the Association of New Jersey Environmental Commissions, Newark Water Coalition, as well as the Green Amendment for Generations, and are so excited to can be continuing work with the Green Amendment movement and running today's webinar to educate about what the amendment means and how we can work with legislators and decision makers to help foster change. By, ad by educating young people about plastic pollution and intersectional environmental issues, giving them a platform to get involved with and sharing how they could be leaders for change, Bye Bye Plastic Bags New Jersey is working to help students take their futures into their own hands. We provide numerous opportunities to gain awareness, meet members across the state and get trained on important skills. If you are a student or a young person watching, you can join the team at bit.ly slash BBP New Jersey. In the future, some of our plans include to continue advocating for the Green Amendment to be on a ballot, organizing a webinar on fast fashion and providing environmental commissions with toolkits and resources to help them make the transition away from single use. We hope you can support our mission and feel free to reach out to us at our email by at bbbnewyearsy at gmail.com. I'd like to now turn it over to the policy team to talk about the Green Amendment and what its effects are on the people of New Jersey. I'd like to start by introducing our team. Arush is a sophomore attending the Morris County Vocational Academy for Math, Science, and Engineering. He is also the policy coordinator of Bye Bye Plastic Bags. And in his free time, Arush enjoys reading, singing, and playing with his dog. My name is Alana, and I'm a junior attending the Academy for Allied Health Sciences. I'm a member of the policy team at Bye Bye Plastic Bags, a national field representative for our climate. In my free time, I love to listen to music and write. Last but certainly not least, Ayana is a sophomore attending Bergen County Technical High School. She's a member of the policy team at Bye Bye Plastic Bags. And in her free time, she enjoys playing the bass guitar, going for hikes, and listening to music. So before we talk about the Green Amendment, let's take a step back and look at the context. Today, New Jersey is known by our nation as one of the highest standards of environmental advocacy. And to some extent, it's true. New Jersey is truly one of the most sustainable states constantly working to better protect our thriving ecosystems and pristine scenery. However, there's another side of the story that's often not told, a story of pollution and environmental degradation. This year, the American Lung Association gave 11 out of 21 counties an F for their air quality. Daily, this polluted air is raising the risk of asthma, lung cancer, heart disease, and more for every New Jerseyan. Cities such as Newark, continue to suffer from lead contaminated water. PFC contaminated water causes our children to suffer developmental delays. It can even impact the kidneys and liver, harm the immune system and cause cancer. The sea continues to encroach on our coast and slowly our ecosystems are failing. As a state, we are doing a good job. Just last year, Governor Murphy signed off in the Environmental Justice Bill and the Plastic Pollution Reduction Act. Two momentous way moves that will redefine how the environmental environment is protected in New Jersey. However, New Jersey must do more to preserve its natural and ecological beauty. The only way to secure the right to a clean environment for present and future generations is with the Green Amendment. Put simply, the Green Amendment would secure the environmental rights of the people of New Jersey. Specifically, the Green Amendment guarantees the people the right to clean air clean water, and healthy ecosystems and environments. It will make the state the trustee of these natural resources and thus responsible for preserving the environment for present and future generations. Furthermore, the Green Amendment would promote equity and environmental protection, greatly aiding communities of color, indigenous, low income, and immigrant communities who are routinely targeted in environmental sacrifice zones and are disproportionately overburdened. All people would have evil protection, opportunity, and responsibility to stand up for their environmental rights. 
regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, location, or income. This movement is supported by all the diverse communities that make up our great state. 20 plus leaders are collaborating weekly to encourage the passage of a statewide student amendment. More than 100 organizations are signed on in support of this amendment. More than 1,500 individuals have signed the petition asking our government to take this monumental step to preserve our environment. And perhaps most impressively, two states, Pennsylvania and Montana, have actually added this amendment to their constitution, paving the way for the rest of the nation to follow. Legislators and 10 other states have lead amendment proposals and are considering this constitutional right for their constituents. Now, we know what the Green Amendment is, but why do we want one for our state? We want a Green Amendment because we want to live in a society where we do not have to worry about whether or not the water we are drinking or using has lead in it. We do not want to worry about whether or not it is safe to go outside because of the air quality. We want to be able to go outside and feel safe in our environment and not have to worry about these things. We want to live our lives knowing that we will make it to our old age. We are tired of our lives being gambled in the pursuit of short-term profit. We want a better future for all because everyone deserves a safe and clean environment. Race, religion, sexuality, gender, location, and ethnicity should not change that. Unfortunately, in New Jersey, people are suffering from preventable diseases because of pollution and demand for profit. We are tired of people's lives mattering less than profit. Life should be above and respected more than the desire for more wealth. We need environmental justice now, not sooner or later, but right now. It is not just that wealthier communities get to enjoy clean air and water while poorer communities suffer. Clean air and water should be a given, not a luxury. That is why we support a Green Amendment. We need it for our people, but we also need it for our planet. The environment is our future and it is our job to look after it. Nature is beautiful and precious, and it's such a shame that we do not take care of it as we should. The amount of waste and damage we have done to our own environment is devastating and irreversible. It is our responsibility to face the repercussions of our actions and help our planet before it is too late. Now, let's dive into the benefits of a Green Amendment. So what are the benefits that New Jersey's people will enjoy under the Green Amendment? While there's been a surge in green activism over the past decade, the few laws that are passed tend to be insufficient, focusing on pollution management over prevention. However, a constitutional amendment would have a greater effect than a green law for several reasons. Firstly, the constitution is a document in which all the people's rights are enshrined. To include this amendment in the constitution would be a monumental step towards honoring the people's right to a healthy environment as a basic inalienable right. Furthermore, the Constitution allows the people to take initiative into their own hands. If someone feels that their environmental rights are infringed upon by the state, they can campaign on their own behalf, with the case being handled by the highest judiciary in the state, the Supreme Court of New Jersey. This would empower legislators as well, encouraging them to evaluate the environmental impacts of their decisions prior to their passage. Yet another reason is that the amendment would provide a path for municipalities to protect their environmental rights on a local level. For all of these reasons and more, it is imperative that New Jersey take this step towards securing the people's environmental rights once and for all. I'd like to take a moment to analyze the language of the proposed amendment. This is the amendment taken directly from Bill ACR 80, SCR 30, verbatim. First and foremost, the amendment promises the people the right to a clean and healthy environment, including pure water and ecologically healthy habitats. Furthermore, it asks that the state not infringe upon these rights by action or inaction. Finally, it defines the natural resources of the state as belonging to the people and asks that the state serve as a trustee of these resources for present and future generations. As we can see, the Green Amendment would protect all aspects of the natural environment, which is precisely what makes it more effective than regular environmental legislation. Its addition to the state constitution would finally place the people's environmental rights on par with the same inalienable rights outlined in the New Jersey Bill of Rights, the freedom of speech, the freedoms of assembly and religion, and property rights. Another of the most important effects a Green Amendment will have is ensuring statewide environmental justice. Environmental justice is defined as the equal treatment and involvement of all people in environmental decision making. 
Once enshrined in the Constitution, this amendment would make the environment a civil right belonging to all, ending the systemic environmental racism characteristic of our nation at its roots. Things are particularly grim on the environmental justice front at the moment. The COVID crisis has greatly exacerbated the issue by loosening environmental regulations and targeting the same communities of color, indigenous, low income and immigrant communities that are most impacted by factory waste and pollution. Yet in this bleak time for these overburdened communities across the state, there is a beacon of hope. Just a few months ago, Governor Murphy signed off on historic environmental justice legislation that will direct New Jersey towards a future where no community is discriminated against due to race or financial status. However, it is limited in power and requires the passage of supplemental laws to close any loopholes and truly make it the law of the state. A statewide Green Amendment would be the next big step towards ensuring that all people have an equal right to a healthy environment. Enshrining this inalienable right in the New Jersey Constitution would effectively intertwine the value of environmental justice with New Jersey corporate and government policy. It would give the people the ability to address these issues on the local level without the passage of numerous other laws and their accompanying enforcement. In summary, a Green Amendment would shorten the path towards environmental equity in our state. These are only a few examples of the tremendous benefits a Green Amendment would have for all the people who live in our great state. At this time, I'd like to turn this over to Ayana, who will discuss common arguments against the institution of a Green Amendment. So what are some common arguments against a Green Amendment? First is the argument that a Green Amendment will harm residential and other forms of property development. However, according to a quote from the Pennsylvania Commonwealth Court, the Green Amendment was never intended to deprive persons of the use of their property or to de derail beneficial development. Beneficial in this context means that it leads to an increase in the general welfare, convenience, and or prosperity of the people. Having a Green Amendment means that legislators have to take into consideration both property and environmental rights in their decision making to find a balance. What the Green Amendment does require is that such development does not occur at the expense of unreasonable degradation of the environment, which should already be a basic expectation of property development. Another frequent rebuttal to the idea of a Green Amendment is the question of how legislators can be responsible for protecting the rights enumerated in the Green Amendment when they are not entirely within the control of a state or even country. However, according to Green Amendments for the Generations, the solution to this issue is the idea of due process, which means that government officials can and should fulfill their obligations to ensure that their own laws, actions, and decisions within their own jurisdictions do not infringe on any constitutional rights. Thus, the only responsibility for legislators would be to protect the rights enumerated in the Green Amendment within their own areas of jurisdiction, with the idea that as more states adopt a Green Amendment, they will not have to worry about Green Amendment violations outside of state lines. These are two examples of many easily disproved arguments against the Green Amendment, and for more information, refer to the Green Amendment FAQ sheet that will be sent out following this presentation. New Jersey is blessed with unparalleled natural beauty and scenery from the cascading buttermilk falls to the waves of Sandy Hook Beach to the majestic wolves at the Lakota Wolf Preserve. If we don't act soon, the treasure of New Jersey, its unique flora and fauna will be irreversibly lost to pollution and degradation. Please join the list of legislators sponsoring bill ACR 80, SCR 30 and advocate on its behalf. On behalf of all the people of New Jersey, I'm asking both sides of the aisle to take this step to secure our environmental rights because environmental rights should be human rights. I'd like to end with a quote from Franklin D. Roosevelt, a president renowned for pulling our country from depression and into prosperity. Roosevelt said, there is nothing so American as our national parks. The fundamental idea behind the parks is that the country belongs to the people that it is in the process of making for the enrichment of the lives of all of us. As a state, we call upon our legislators to return the country to the people by acknowledging that every man and woman in this nation has the natural inalienable right to a healthy, strong environment that will persevere for years to come. Thank you. At this time, it is my honor to introduce our two guest speakers who will be answering your questions about the Green Amendment. Maya Van Rossum is the founder of Green Amendments for the Generations, a grassroots nonprofit inspiring the nationwide movement to secure constitutional recognition of environmental rights in every state. 
Maya is also the, known as the Delaware Riverkeeper, leading the Delaware Riverkeeper Network, a watershed-based advocacy organization for over 25 years. David Pringle is the New Jersey coordinator of the Green Amendment movement. He has been a public interest advocate, strategist, organizer, and lobbyist for three decades, especially focused on state regulatory and legislative action on behalf of the environment, most notably serving as the campaign director at Clean Water Action. At this time, we would like to invite the audience to ask questions. Feel free to unmute or just post your question in the chat. So at this time, does anyone have any questions for Maya or David? 